Welcome back, everyone. My name is Chris Rivers. And I'm Mandy Mack. And we're Poe on the Call. And we are so excited to be here with the amazing Poe performer and Poe coach, Kenny Deary. Woo woo, that's me. Hey. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Kenny, for, for agreeing to be interviewed and for sharing your Poe journey and your story and all about your <laughs> journey, maybe before that, and all the things to come as well. <laughs> Back. I'm excited. Alrighty. So I guess we'll start with like something simple. Um, uh, um, what brought you to pole dancing, and how did you get into teaching pole dance? Okay, so, um, I guess first I think I started eight or nine years ago. I get confused. I know I started August twenty four team but somewhere along the like those lines but before then me and a couple of like high school friends uh we took a random class from Groupon in Long Island I'm from New York by the way so we went it was a really hard class like I was struggling I could not climb I couldn't do anything I was sore for like days but I really enjoyed it so when I got back home from college, that was like after I graduated 2014, you know, I wanted to keep myself active. And I guess, I don't know if you have this question too, but it ties into me having a dance background. So I've been dancing ballet, jazz, hip hop, some point, some African. And when I got back, I just wanted to be active. And I actually wanted to go back to ballet but then I was like, hmm, pole is different. And I feel like it's, I don't say more challenging, but it can challenge me in different ways. Like I never took gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So doing handstands would be like something new for me, but I'm willing to try it. So that's basically why I got into pole dancing. And then I took one class a week because I went back to school and like as a treat, and then I was like, oh, I could do two classes a week. Then it was like maybe three. Then it was like, let me take two classes back to back. And it was a downward spiral from there. <laughs> like literally downward spiral. <laughs> you mean upward spiral, up the pole. <laughs> oh, I love down. That. <laughs> down. It became, it became hooked instantly. Yeah. I love it. Do you find what, do you find that um well oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's okay. <laughs> do you find that your um history with ballet um and different African dances helped you with pole? Like do you are you able to add that in your choreo, different things like that? I would say it would I guess in a sense make me more graceful. So I if someone saw me dance they would probably assume that I have a dance background, maybe from like like a ballet based background. I think it would help in that sense. I don't necessarily do ballet moves, except it's like a split type of thing, but I just like the flow of ballet. But yeah. Yes. <laughs> Right. It, it is a little bit hard to like find the grace if you don't have the, the dance background. But I would say that you do have the, the ballet sort of movements in your yeah. your movements for sure. But do you want to talk about your your favorite Go style ahead. of pole then? Oh, my favorite yeah. style is like sexy stripper style. I like. OK, not I'm really weird, so I don't like too raunchy. I'm okay, no. I would say I'm more like sensual side. Like, ooh, touch me nicely, but not like suck on me. But that's just me. <laughs> I don't know. Like there's so many ranges in pole, but that's like where I feel the most comfortable dancing. And that's what I like seeing. And I like the heels aspect as well. Yeah. I love that. So specific. Thank you for the honesty. <laughs> 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 I mean, I like it. I like the because there are sort 
there are so many different ways to be sexy. There's the raunchy style, and then there's, you know, a little more sensual. There really is a wide range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I really like stripper style because I like the fast paced move. You can hear me? Oh, oh, I was like, wait, Oh, this I can't. is I'm just, I'm just like classic. <laughs> okay. I'm classic. <laughs> I like the um the fast paced movements. I like the musicality. I like the tricks. Like I like the wow factor, and I love ratchet music. So I'm here for the the shenanigans, all of it. Yeah. Yes, I don't want love to ask it. what's your. I kind of want to ask what's your ratchet song that you get down and twerk to. <laughs> Yeah, every song is my ratchet song. To be honest, like I'll literally pick anything. I'll take to no music. I'll twerk like. Right now, like, it just, I just have a great time. Like, I'm teaching class, and I'll just drop down in Turk, and they're just, like, I don't want to say struggling, but, like, you know, working out. And I'm just like, yes, yeah. I, get it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, how long after you started pole dance did you decide to become a, a teacher? I Well, When I started dancing, I already knew that I wanted to become a teacher. I'm going to say mostly because I was spending a lot of money, like a lot of money. But I also just, I just wanted to teach as well. So maybe, maybe two or three years after I think I started teaching, Yeah, because I wanted to obviously, you know, get better and get more knowledgeable about everything within pole before I just started teaching people. But that was like my roadmap. <laughs> right. It becomes like you're like, I'm in this so much that like I need to like either put myself all in or I, I have to teach me. <laughs> something something has to come out of it. Yes. <laughs> I know, and te teaching definitely helps save money too, especially when you're taking a lot of classes as a student. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a pro and con because like for me right now, I teach a lot, but I'm not able to practice like I used to train. Like I, I, I'm not training like I used to. So I try to train while teaching. So I'm teaching things that I also want to learn. Yeah. But, um, sometimes that's hard too, but yeah. Right. It is really hard to to keep up with your own training, but that is a good tactic to to teach what you're going to be trained in. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely done that a lot, a lot for sure too. <laughs> And I did, know facts. did you start teaching in a studio or, um, cause I noticed you're teaching in crunch fitness, which is a gym, right? Right. Yeah. So I actually started teaching in a studio kind of like a, not, I don't say apprentice, but like a, um, like a new teacher kind of vibes. I don't know if I started with parties and then graduated to teaching, but um, I started in a studio teaching and I was really nervous because the studio I was going to, it's like I was teaching my peers that I was also at that time learning with. So it's like, now I'm your teacher. Like, I don't want to, I'm not trying to like be uh, like uppity, like, I just want to teach like it I don't know it was like a weird dynamic for me at least at that studio I mean they were nice but it was just like oh like you're teaching I like yes <laughs> right though that imposter syndrome is like there yeah especially if you have to teach your friends too <laughs> yeah. and then um how long did it um how long were you teaching in a studio before you decided to teach at French Fitness Um, I was teaching, I think maybe either a year and a half or two years. Yes, I was trying to get into crunch, I think at the same time, but that didn't happen yet because I wasn't certified, I guess. I wasn't certified, but um, I tried again a couple years later and then I got hired. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I was teaching and still training. I was training at Crunch. I just wasn't teaching at Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm so interested in the situation at Crunch too, because I'll see in your videos, there's just like regular people in the background, just like working out <laughs> and you're yeah. just like killing it on the pole. What is that experience like? Um, it's an experience. So, you know, Crunch is a gym. It's like an open gym. Um, they have their treadmills, whatever. So classes in a group fitness room where they have other group fitness classes during the day and um, evening. And um, some rooms are blocked off, but some rooms you they have, there's like mirrors. So you can see through what's happening. And a lot of times people watch, not necessarily hard, there are those times though, but they'll like look and be like, oh my God, Crunch has pole gym, like pole. And they're like, what's going on in there? And they're just like looking around the room. It's an experience, but Crunch is for everyone. So it is what it is. I I don't enjoy it being watched, but I like I like it. <laughs> if that makes right. Sense. Yeah. Right. I was thinking about it. it's kind of like you're in a fishbowl. Like you can't like if you mess up, like everyone's looking at you. Like you're if you have personal practice in there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Build, like after building class. forever fans. <laughs> have a sign with our Instagram here. Follow me here for more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Or leave like a QR code for tips. Yeah. Just be like, if you like this. Like if you like the QP. <laughs> come find me here yeah yes <laughs> so that's really cool because it it introduces a lot more people to pole dance than they normally would to because it's like right there in the gym it definitely does and i i mean punch is not a traditional studio like a pole studio but the students there, like the ones that are serious, they come to class and they come, we have this several classes, they come to like every class and they practice and they get better. Like they really train. So, I mean, if you wanted to pole dance and you needed a more like, I guess, econo economically friendly, no, what's the word? That's not the word, sorry, brain fart. But basically, if you wanted to save a little bit more money, it that's a good place to start until you're like, okay, maybe I want to transfer to a studio or in addition, I want to train at, at a studio. Yeah, and then can everyone that pole dance it, takes parts in the pole dance, can they also take uh, lessons at the gym or like use the gym? For pole? I'm, yeah, do you have to like join separately or, or are they combined? Yeah, so the pole group fitness classes are part of the membership. So there's two types of crunch, and this is where people get confused. There's the blue one and there's the orange one. So the orange is signature, and the blue one is kind of like bling, kind of like a planet fitness. So if you join the orange one, you have access to all the classes at the gym. And then if you have all access pass, you have access to all the gyms that are orange, basically. So it's included in your membership. That's awesome. So you can just like cross train and take pole and do all of the things in the same location. That's amazing. Right. Ah. <laughs> I don't know, that's cool. There's pole, yeah. there's Lyra, there's yeah. anti-gravity. At some point we had like what? silks. I remember taking like a silks class. But that was wow. like yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And are the, the poles permanently in there? Or do they come out? Do you have to put them in and out each time? Oh, yeah. We have to put them in and out each time. <laughs> it's a fun experience, you know. I mean, that's it. That's the only, I don't say downside. But it's like I'm training before teaching and then I'm training after and then I'm training after teaching. When I take the pose down, I'm training some more. But um, it's it's good. Good practicing, putting poles up, figuring out if it's not. I don't say figuring out if it's centered. Like they configure it, configure it in a way where it's like centered and stuff. But it's good practice. Like I have no problem putting a pole up. I put my pole up all the time, and I don't use a ruler. I just 
I just look at it. I'm like, okay, this is centered. And I just know. Oh my gosh, that's so much work. <laughs> no one realizes how much work we do. Yeah. I can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, how many um, times a week do you teach? I teach... four times a week but then sometimes okay I teach four times a week on Tuesdays I teach two classes back to back but then sometimes I sub other classes at other studios so I could be teaching like this week I taught Sunday Monday Tuesday I'm teaching Thursday Friday. I'm not teaching Saturday because I have a uh, training, but I would have been teaching Saturday. Yeah. Do you have time to rest? <laughs> Almost four times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get on a schedule because I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> It is. I was reading your biography um, and it mentioned that you won in the U.S. PDF. Um, I might have pronounced that wrong, 2017. Mm -hmm. Do you mind going into talking about that? And are you training or do you plan on training for any future competitions? Um, okay, so that competition was 2017 U.S. PDF Sexy Novice. And it was my first competition. Like, I've never competed before. And I was dancing for, like, two to three years at that time. Yeah, three years. And I was really nervous. I think that competition, before, when we tested the polls, I wasn't sticking. I think I had, like, I had a breakdown. Like, um, like I was crying before I got on the stage. And my friend was like, oh, just calm down. Because I was like, I'm not sticking to the polls. <laughs> some of that's really traumatic like <laughs> and, and, and when you're always trying to figure out like am I gonna stick or not like it's it's a scary experience but I really like that routine one of my teacher friends helped me polish it up and yeah I honestly honestly I was surprised I won because not saying that my routine wasn't good it was just a lot of people's routines were good. And then the, when they were like, oh, first place, Kenny, I said, what? <laughs> I was like, like, I feel like there was like a video somewhere. And I was just like, what? Are you, are you sure? I'm like, me? Like, nah. Like, okay. But yeah. Yeah, that was, that was cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. That must have been amazing. Congrats yeah. on that. That's awesome. Oh, and my mom, yeah. me, um, sorry to cut you off. My mom got to see me perform for like the first time. Like she knew wow. I was taking classes and stuff, but I never really like showed her videos because, but she saw me perform and yeah, so that was like a really nice experience. So, so she could see, you know, what other things pole dancing has to offer and, um, yeah, and to win was just like icing. Ray, what an honor to have your mom in the audience and then to be the winner of this national competition. <laughs> like, wow. Know, right? She was like, Do you get money? I was like, Not for this one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but in the future, yes. That competition was so fun. It was. I wish I, I wish I had experience that I don't even remember nothing about it. That's roughly when I started stripping and learning about pole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean competitions come and go. There's so many competitions. Um okay. uh, part part of me wants to compete at least one more time. Yeah. But also competing is very mentally draining. And the hardest part about not just competing, just competing, training, performing in general for me is just finding a song that takes me like so long. And I'm like, I don't know what song. Then I'm the type of person, 
Like I'll listen to this song, but I won't listen to it all the time. Okay, they, okay. Let me backtrack because now I sound crazy. So prepping for USPDF, right? I found my song. I was like, cool. I did some foundation work. And this is why I tell people, work smarter, not harder. Just have combos ready and then just do those combos because you don't want to try to learn new things and scramble at the last minute. I was practicing and then I was like, eh, I'm not really feeling any of this. I started practicing for like one month. So I started my training definitely three to four months before competition because I already know at least one of those months, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to the song. I'm not going to plan anything out. I'm just like, mm, yeah, I'm tired of this. So, yeah. Then I got back on it. And then I practiced like a couple more times. But I never overexert myself. But, yeah, never. I love that. <laughs> I love that kind of I love that philosophy <laughs> work mm -hmm. smarter not harder mm -hmm. um I can't wait to see what you come up with if you decide to compete in the future <laughs> performing yes I would like to I don't mind well actually I don't mind performing but I also get like what am I gonna do and even that I also don't practice that much I'm really bad like the thought is there my heart is there but my body is not <laughs> <laughs> my body's but, but you have incredible experience i can't even imagine though i'd be so fucking nervous too i mean i'm sorry because yeah. um, i was reading your biography and i remember you uh if i remember correctly doja cat and a uh, album premiere yes she had um an album premiere party i feel like was this 20 it, i think it might have been 2019 for her album Hot Pink. And that was pretty cool. So we were like background dancing on the pole. We got to meet her. I think we took a picture with her. We did take a picture with her. It was a time. There was a lot going on. But yeah, I liked it. <laughs> oh yeah. That I can't sounds even so imagine. <laughs> I'm a, I would have been so nervous. I would that is such a beautiful experience. Oh my God, wait, no, this, I met and I met, you. I don't know if you know Malik Yoba. Mm -hmm. He was in. Um, I feel like my students listen to him at the high school. Oh, what's that movie? It's like all the people are married. They're married. There's like five couples. They're married. I don't know. He was in. Why did I get married? Yes, there we go. That okay, <laughs> I'm so okay, sorry. Yeah. I think he was in that no, one. That's okay. I saw him at Museum of Sex, and he saw he came up to me, and he was like, "Oh, great set!" And I was just like, "Okay," almost confused him with someone else. No, not like okay, like uh, but I was just like, "Oh, okay, thank you." Almost confused him with someone else, but I asked him what his name was, and I was just like, "Okay, good call." Go, go, good call, Kenny. <laughs> I'm telling you, one game I am not going to win is trivia. Do not ask me who's who, what's the name, where the front. Like, I do not know. I do not remember. We're gonna. If I'm on your team, I'm gonna lose. You're gonna lose. So yeah, yeah. Too funny. I love that. <laughs> Fun oh fact goodness. about Kenny. <laughs> Literally, do not. <laughs> You have lived, Lord. That's the advice for other pollers. <laughs> I'm very lucky to too, because <laughs> anybody, no one is safe. <laughs> too funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, do you have any any advice for beginner pole dancers? <laughs> um, I would say take your time. Listen to your body. Don't, everyone is always eager to learn every trick and that's fine because I probably was similar or the same way too. But I also knew that having foundation was important. Training was important. Conditioning was very important because that's, 
that's why I feel like right now I'm so strong. Like I don't condition as much as I used to, but like people are like, oh my God, you're so strong. I was like, yeah, because in the beginning I was doing the same things over and over and over and over again. Like I didn't do like a brass monkey type of thing until like year three. Cause I, first of all, was really scared. That's a scary ass move, but <laughs> I just take your time, listen to your body, have people spot you because pole is not easy you can get injured easily and thankfully not well that's not lit but knock out wood I'm like knocking on the wall knock out wood like I haven't been badly injured or anything yet so yeah oh yeah and train with different people train with different studios see who you like so you see who you don't like figure out well, you don't have to figure out your style right away, but like you can see the different styles and then you gravitate to whatever style like fits you best. Yeah. I love that advice. Thank you for sharing that. No <laughs> Same here, especially uh, try and different. smarter, not harder. Studios. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> work smarter, not harder. Too funny. <laughs> I want to ask, I already know one part. What's your future in Poe? And fingers crossed for you getting to perform for drink. <laughs> that would be like the highlight of my life. If I could like yeah. be Drake, be in a music video, I'm okay. I could retire and I'll be fine, honestly. Yeah. But a future in Poe, I don't know. I'm just here for, well, like my dad would say, here for a good time, not a long time. So I'm here for a good time. And yeah, that's really it. And you know, I've been teaching. If performances come up, performance opportunities, I'll take them, obviously, because who wouldn't? But other than that, I'm just chilling, just teaching. And yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, do you happen to have a muggle job besides the teaching? Yes, I work for the Department of Health. So that's yeah. my job. It pays the bills. So that's what I do. Nothing too interesting, I'd say, but it pays the bills. I go to work every day. I work practically. <laughs> like, no, I don't dance all day, unfortunately, because everyone's like, oh my God, you dance all the time. I'm like, no, I work during the day. <laughs> So, yeah, I know I have a lot of videos. It's because I'm good at planning things out. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so you're deceiving everyone. You're really doing like 8,000 things every day. Yeah. <laughs> Batch oh creating gosh. is genius. <laughs> yeah. Tell you, like I said, work smarter, not harder. If you need to, I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> right though but maybe like it people do need tips though because it is hard to juggle like you're teaching like mm -hmm. a lot and you're mm -hmm. coming up with your own stuff you are practicing on your own you're keeping mm -hmm. up with your conditioning you're also working maybe you have some self-care going on in there too and and posting a social media that's a lot how do you do all of it <laughs> it's definitely a lot like I feel like Maybe last year I probably took a break or kind of like went down. 2020, I was more on top of it, but it is very draining to constantly post things online. And then it's not like you're posting for yourself, like you're posting for other people so you, they can get information, information about you, information about like what you do and sponsorship stuff like that creating content that takes time that takes planning it's not easy and then the same thing with like YouTube like I I want to get back into YouTube but um finding the time finding not necessarily the content but just the time to shoot videos and I've been doing all this on my phone, well, most of it on my phone, and then finding time to edit and then upload. It's a lot when you do it all by yourself. So not easy at all. 
and you're amazing. <laughs> that's that's so much. Yeah. And I know what we'll add in your future, a virtual assistant to help you with this. <laughs> A virtual assistant that knows how to shoot, edit, record, and be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or at least, and I can or, or at least schedule the post for you so you don't have to post every day. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been posting less too, but like you, I mean, you don't really need to post every day. It's just you can post every day, but also you don't have to post every day. But I always have videos on hand because just in case I'm going to post today, I'm like, hmm, let me post this video. Yes. <laughs> I love that that tip, though, of like keeping the, the videos on hand because sometimes mm -hmm. like you don't feel like creating content and like that'll be for like weeks. But if you have stuff on hand, you can always just like pull from that. Back. Yeah. So what I've been doing as far as that, I mean, I don't know if you asked, but I'm just going to tell y'all my secret so after class after I teach like I'll stay for maybe maybe 30 45 minutes depending on how much time I have it could be like five minutes and I'll just record a little something a little a little flow something I taught in class um tricks I'm practicing tricks that I want to teach and I mean anything is really content content is what you make so it doesn't have to be perfect like it can be literally video of me trying something and it's like hey you know pull is hard everything's not going to be easy and that's a whole video right there like you you don't have to make things harder than what they are for sure <laughs> yes thank you for sharing that with us <laughs> Ooh, <Rain. a> <laughs> oh three dogs i apologize no, don't apologize. That's why I was like, ooh, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, want one. I want one. They're so cute. Aww. They are. <laughs> um, do you happen to have a favorite poe trick or poe nemesis trick? Um, my favorite poe trick, I think, would be a poe sit. I have more than one. A pirouette. And maybe a jade. Yes, my favorites. Nemesis, anything upside down, because I, people don't believe me, but I do not really like to be upside down. So brass knee things, yuck. Um, flippy things, no. Tumbles, no. Oh my God, handstands, like regular hands. Oh. No, no, no. None of those things. No. I love it. Thank you for that honesty. Such a wide <laughs> range from both favorite yeah, it's, and yeah. it's never, I don't say never ending, but like Brass Monkey, oh my God, Elbi Yishas. And yes, I've done these things before, but they make me uncomfortable. So I would say Nemesis tricks. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I also hate going upside down and Brass Monkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, who created this? Well, was it Marlo? <laughs> why did you make this move? And why would you want to stay here so long? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> <it's really> <laughs> go to other things from this? No. <laughs> mm -mm. Oh my gosh. But like, what kind I love of that. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I no. guess. Even though there's things I don't like to do, I find ways around it. So I don't like to go, I don't like to invert into some stuff, but like I'll figure out a way to do it on the floor or yeah, on the floor or like coming down into it to make it more accessible for me and not as like scary. And then my students too, like if you're learning new things and it's like, oh, okay, this is not that bad. I'm like, yeah, there's other ways to do this because that way, why would you do that? Like a layback to iguana? Like, why would you do that? To me, it might, okay. I've also done this before, but I haven't done it in a while. And it's like, why would you just drop down when you can do an outside leg hang to iguana and it makes it like, it just so much easier. Well, for me, in my head. 
<laughs> oh my I'm god. Try to picture outside like hey sweet iguana. I have to see it. That's not because I hate the I hate the iguana from a lean back. So I'm curious yeah, I don't how like to get that into it either. from outside. I'm curious how to get into it from outside like hey. D if you if you DM me, maybe I could send you a video. I know I've did I've done it. I have a video and it's probably on my page somewhere. Like it's one of my favorite transitions because it's so easy. Well, now I don't say so easy, but it's easier. Because you already oh like God. it upside down. Yeah, I need this transition too because I only have tried it from the layback and I hated it and I hate iguana, but I want to be in it. <laughs> nope. Outside way, oh. hey. Uh, yep. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have a, a favorite hand and body grip that you use for pole? Um. Yes. So I have dry hands, which is like the staple. And then I also have pole poise, which is like a moisturizer type of grip. And that's good for me because not that... Well, if I don't put lotion on, then I have dry skin. So that's why I would say it would be good for me. But yes, it's good if you have dry skin. I, yeah. I've never heard of the pole poise. I've only heard of the that pole physics one, the lotion. Yeah, there's so many different brands now. Like yeah. you just got to try them all and see whatever works best for you. Because some people uh, say, like, corn huskers. Some people say, like, vodka, you know, shaving cream. Vodka. I mean, shaving cream, yeah. It's, shaving it's cream. endless, the possibilities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my skin's been particularly dry lately, so I don't know if I need to, like, think of something else to use. So I appreciate those suggestions. We always ask to see what people are using. <laughs> I really could never tell if my hands are dry. All I know is that I don't stick to the pole. And like this past month since winter has come, I have not stuck to the pole. I don't know if it's because my hands are dry or they're just too moist and clammy. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Being too dry or being too sweaty. Like it'll make yeah. you slippery. Yeah. You gotta find yeah. like a like a tack. Right? Yeah. It keeps changing too. I don't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mine is too. Uh, problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you do you only teach um in person right now? Do you have any online options? No online options, just in person because that takes too much time. Well, not time, but I don't wanna mentally come home and have to teach an online class. Can I? Yes. Do I want to? No. <laughs> Especially I'm teaching so like much in person already. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely have to go and take the ride out and visit you and take your class. <laughs> uh, don't listen to hearsay, okay? Because people will tell you I'm scared to take Kenny's class. And I'm like, I, but it's not scary. I just like to do a lot of splits and a lot of strength-based things. But it's not a scary time. It's actually very, well, it's fun to me. But like <laughs> I said, don't listen to anybody else. If they tell you something, they're lying. They're liars, okay? Because they all take the class and they all do what I teach, so. Yes. Well, I like it already because I know there'll be no brass monkey be splits which i like no upside down to brass monkey brass knee hold not upside down okay like, yeah. i can deal with that yeah. oh that my god I, i'm i'm like excited we have to make a tour to go down there and i'm gonna be camera ready for all the people watching through the world <laughs> i'm trying to put a oh, okay yeah okay. i'll probably be like all right. Someone's always walking through the, the camera. So <laughs> they see it and they just see it and like, okay, let me walk in front. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for making an appearance in my video. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think 
I think, Chris, that was all of the questions that I had to ask him. Um, yeah, one more. Do you have anything else you want to share with the audience? Anything coming up? Any inspiration? Um, all your links and Instagram and TikToks and anything you sent us, we're going to add that to the YouTube comments and the podcast comments. But yeah, do you have anything else you would like to share? Um, not necessarily. I think that's pretty much it. I just like to have fun. I think I'm a nice person, a nice teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like I like to dress up. So I always like to have. I consider myself to be best dressed. So I like to have my outfits together, my shoes, and all that good stuff. And yeah, I like to have a good time. And I'm nice. <laughs> Gotta circle back to I'm nice. <laughs> I love it. Oh, gee, we're gonna have to don't listen like to anyone. Hey, I'm nice. Listen. Mm -hmm. That sounded like a whole dance dating like bio. Like I'm I I can't wait to take class with you. That sounds like fun. We have to make a plan to go out there. And it's in New York, too. I didn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll make a whole day Ooh, of it. I have a question that just popped out of nowhere. Do you do workshops? Oh, yeah. Um. No, I've done two workshops. But do I do workshops? No. Would I do workshops? Yes. Sorry, I know these questions, my answers are really like, yes, but no. <laughs> yes. I don't know, it, it depends. Like, if there's a demand, I'll do a workshop. But if there's no demand, I'm not going to do a workshop. Basically. Understandable. Yeah. Well, we'll keep that in mind. We are always looking for workshop people. <laughs> Especially I if know. you're close by, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's this workshop that I, I guess created, and it's called Sizzle and Splits Flow Work. So it's stretching, and then I incorporate flow work moves into it. And depending on how much time I have, sometimes I incorporate a routine at the end. And I like it. So More especially, would love that. especially yes. with like people who don't necessarily stretch but want to like get into stretching. And just to make it like more fun, like it's not labor. I mean, you're still working, but it's not super super hard yeah and it's like stretching for a purpose because you're like making the the shapes and everything and you're like oh mm -hmm. okay i don't have to wait yeah, to be cool on the pole later <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe, like, yeah, maybe i should do a workshop for that thing usually i do it like free or donation but that also involves planning and time <laughs> oh. so many thoughts you need an assistant <laughs> the idea sounds nice but the idea is who and my hand is like who <laughs> yeah. i love it too funny yes i need that workshop though mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh Kenny, this is this has been so much fun thank hey, you you're welcome <laughs> yeah. thank you so much it was truly a pleasure to meet you i hope we can have you for a workshop and definitely come visit your studio that sounds like a good time yes i'm there yes. basically all the time <laughs> <laughs> so just look at me and i'll be there yes oh my god well i guess we should get into our closing then if this is the end <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode or listening to this episode of Full on the Call. And watching. Yeah. Watching, listening, you know, enjoying. Yeah. I'm, not supposed to, I'm not supposed to interrupt. Okay, let me shut up. No, you're fine. <laughs> I love this. Me like, so yes. Much. Thank you for coming to this episode. Oh my God. Please put me in. I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. Okay. It was a great time <laughs> having you as host, you know. Make sure you follow, subscribe like <laughs> share comment okay check out our products <laughs> check out our products no problem you need someone to sell here is the product yes i love it <laughs> mm -hmm. oh my gosh yes <laughs> well on that note my name is mandy mac <laughs> and i'm chris rivers
And we're here Thank with you. Kenny Deary. <laughs> and I'm Kenny Deary. Yes. Oh, I love those pink heels. And we are signing off. Oh, yes. I was yeah. like, what are your shoes? Ooh, we're fancy.